quick disclaimer. Everything in this video and all of my videos are my opinion based on detailed research that I perform. That said, I would recommend doing your own research before you make up your mind. Thank you. This is going to be one of my shorter videos, but I want to talk about something that is incredibly important to me and I think to all of you as well. And that is the importance of the press and public serving as a check on people that are trying to gain power. After the Oprah interview with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, there's been quite a fallout. With on-air explosive arguments, Pierce Morgan walking off set mid-show, and the talk being put on hiatus. And one thing is becoming very obvious to all of us, which is that people are very afraid afraid to share their true opinions out of fear that they'll have the Twitter version of a pitchfork wielding mob on them in no time and they'll be carried off to the stake and get cancelled. Except for Sky News Australia. Honestly, they speak so intelligently and candidly, I have truly enjoyed their coverage of the Oprah interview. But it's the fear of getting cancelled that made Sharon Osbourne absolutely lose it at her co-host on the talk. And now stories about Sharon Osbourne's problematic behavior is being raised from the dead and showcased everywhere. I don't have a problem with people calling out Sharon for racism, but what I care about is why. Sharon repeatedly said that she did not agree with Piers, but that she was defending his right to speak. As a result, she's now been effectively silenced. Piers Morgan, a journalist who is paid to think critically, to participate in discussions of opposing viewpoints and argue facts and opinions, came under fire for sharing his thoughts. It seems Meghan Markle exercised her influence and called ITV and demanded that Piers Morgan apologize. Piers refused and walked out. And that's what's really concerning about the situation, that voices of dissension are being silenced. If you like Meghan, or if you don't like Meghan, it's all good. It might be hard to believe, but I don't hate her, and I don't have a personal vendetta against her. What I see, however, is that she publicly displays a lot of problematic behavior that is emblematic of what's seriously wrong with American society today. And that is that accusations of sexism and racism and perpetuating personal victimhood get used by powerful people as impenetrable shields, making it impossible for us to question them, to question their motives and their goals. That if I on this channel question what she's doing, then I must be jealous of her, if not a racist. If Pierce Morgan questions her accusations of racism, which she made without following up with any facts, then he must be salty about her ghosting him after their brief friendship. And if Sharon Osbourne defends her friend's right to speak, she's not defending his opinion, but just his right to give one, then she must be a racist. And here, here are all the instances of her racism. And this is the problem, that there can be no reasonable criticism. It always has to be painted as if it's coming from a racist, bigoted, or jealous place. Meanwhile, what about Megan's behavior? What about the instances of her bullying staff, throwing fits about accommodations, and yet pretending to be powerless when she is one of the most powerful women of our age? And don't get me wrong, women in power is not a bad thing. But a woman in power that cannot be questioned, that cannot be criticized, that is a problem. And that is the role of the press, the news, the people in general. We accept that power has to be handed to a few choice people, but in exchange of that power, we all agree that we are allowed to criticize them as a check against that power. Megan sells her victimhood and powerlessness really well. Even when Harry tries to say during the interview that she showed him he was trapped and that she saved him, she rushes in to disagree and say that he actually saved her. But Megan is a powerful woman. And I know, I know, that's just the most wonderful thing you could say about a woman today. But that's not how I mean it. I don't mean it in the yes queen kind of way, but instead that she has a title, she has a position, she has powerful friends and connections, and she has money. She is powerful. And yet, she wants us all to think of her as a helpless victim so that we don't pay attention to all this power and influence that she has. The Oprah interview itself seems to be her firing back at the royal family for not giving into her and Harry's demands regarding their positions and titles and patronages. Because why were these instances of racism and mental health issues never mentioned before? Never once mentioned for the year they've been out of the family, nor in Finding Freedom, a book that they helped write that was supposed to set the record straight. 
So why now? Why is it coming out now? And when Prince Harry himself has had a therapist, so has Prince Charles, so had Diana, so had Princess Margaret, why would Meghan be denied one? Why would Harry not be able to demand one for her as the grandson of the Queen? Especially since he said during the interview that he has a great relationship with his grandmother. He's clearly one of the more powerful members of the royal family and has worked hard to spread mental health awareness, but he wasn't able to get her help? Harry and Meghan are so helpless that they couldn't get help within the family, but Meghan is so powerful that she could demand an apology from Piers Morgan? See how this stuff doesn't add up? And the result of the interview is that Meghan and Harry's popularity has plummeted in the UK, which is to be expected. But Meghan doesn't care about that. What she's after is to gain the trust and support of the American population. And it seems to have worked. I mean, why wouldn't they love a mixed-raced woman who survived mental health issues, racism, and bullying, and yet broke free from the British royal family? After many lawsuits, the British press seemed to be towing a very careful line with Meghan. Meanwhile, a majority of the American press is already on her side, ready for their marching orders. Here's what I'm working for. In case you're curious, I want to be able to question Megan's behavior. Not Megan's behavior as a woman, nor as a black woman, but as a human being who has the ability to influence people, to influence opinions, has the power to silence people and the resources and connections to run for political office. That's been the most interesting and concerning news to follow the interview itself, that Meghan Markle is speaking with top members of the Democratic Party and eyeing a presidential run. Now, as a citizen of this incredible country, I want to be able to look at her behavior and see if she is what she says she is, or if she is only selling us this victimhood story to not only form a shield around her, but call on a legion of people that will defend her to no end, that will bully and cancel her detractors, and pave an easy road for her to that coveted seat of power, the White House. Thanks everyone, thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and a subscribe and share with someone else that might enjoy this video as well. And I'll see you in the comment section.